now staging of neck node metastasis. NX, as we all know, is regional nodes which cannot be assessed. N0 is no metastasis. N1 is single ipsilateral node which is less than 3 centimeters, as we all know. 2A, 2B and 2C. 2A is single ipsilateral node, 3 to 6 centimeters. 2B is multiple ipsilateral but on the same side, less than 6 or 6. And 2C says that it is bilateral or contralateral nodes, 6 or more than less than 6. And if it is, any node anywhere more than 6 is N3, 6 centimeters. Now, all the tumors go according to the staging, but the nasopharyngeal tumor goes according to whole staging, which I don't think the surgeons would like it. I'm going to need it. And the staging in thyroid cancer has two uh, types of neck nodes. N1A, which is ipsilateral neck nodes, any size. N1B is, goes to the other side or is in the midline. All bilateral. This is N1B. Now, classification of neck, neck dissection. Academics classification. Academy has classified this into radical neck dissection, modified radical neck dissection, selective neck dissection. Selective neck dissection is, radical neck dissection is dissection of the nose from the unilateral side of the neck as we have stated from the lower border of the mandible up to the, up to the clavicle okay, of the same side and posteriorly up to the anterior border of the trapezius muscle, anteriorly to the lateral border of the um, sternohyoid muscle. And modified neck dissection is, we modify it. It's also known as functional neck dissection, where we preserve the sternocleidomastoid, interjugular vein, or the accessory nerve, spinal accessory nerve. Now, selective, selective neck dissection, also known as elective neck dissection, is number one is supra omohyoid neck dissection, where we remove one, two, and three group of lymph nodes, lateral neck dissection, where we remove 2, 3 and 4, posterior lateral, we remove 2, 3, 4, 5 and occasionally posterior and suboccipital, anterior or central compartment clearance, level 6, which is done in thyroid cancers and we have to do it if there is thyroid cancer and extended radical neck dissection is, besides the lymphatic structures, we remove the carotid artery sometimes, parotid sometimes, have a loss of nerve sometimes if it's involved. So this is the radical, extended radical neck dissection. Nowadays, we would not like to classify as selective neck dissection. We would like to say the neck nodes of the levels removed. Like for supra we will say neck dissection level 1 to 3, not supra right? So it will be much more clearer. So I have said about this. Medina's classification is comprehensive neck dissection and selective neck dissection. Comprehensive is radical neck dissection and modified radical neck dissection. As I've said, if you preserve only the spinal accessory nerve, it is type 1. If you preserve spinal accessory and the interjugular vein, then it's type 2. If you preserve all the three, that is terminal mastoid, interjugular and the uh, spinal accessory, then it is type 3 or functional neck dissection and selective neck, neck dissection as I've already said. Now there is spiral classification as well. I don't think we have to go through this. Now another thing is in block dissection. It is always better to remove the leg, neck node in N block along with the, uh, the cancer cells, okay? Like that is removal of the primary malignancy in continuity with the neck dissection. This is preferred technique for every cancer but like in uh, oral cavity, tongue cancers, etc., we will not be able to do so. So we remove in disjunction. Therapeutic like is done in palpable nose, which is very rare nowadays in papillary carcinomas. Very picking was done in ancient times, not nowadays. Elective or prophylactic is done for impalpable nodes in cases of more than 25% risk of open neck node metastasis. Especially we ENT surgeons would not like to leave the neck nodes if there is a cancer in the tongue. Okay? Planning of neck incision. This is very important. Provided we provide adequate exposure to primary malignancies and targeted lymph nodes. The incision or the area to be operated should provide adequate blood supply to the neck flap. Curvilinear incision is better than a straight cut incisions. Minimize the use of trifurcate incisions. This is very important because there will be necrosis and wound gaping. Even uh, there will be stuffing in that area if you use trifurcate incisions. Avoid trifurcations over the carotid artery because it would uh, lead to carotid blowout if there is uh, infection or metastasis. Avoid vital structures underneath the neck section. 
Now, some of the important neck dissection incisions are April, April incision, um, April incision, this is it, half April incision, then we have the Conley incision, yes, sorry, Conley incision, and uh, we have the double Y incision. We have H shift incision, Macri incision. Macri incision is double parallel line incision. This incision is very important where there is irradiated neck. Okay? If you have irradiation for neck before surgery, we have to perform Macri incision. This is the best one because there are no trinidate points anywhere. Then modified Schrobinger incision and Schrobinger incision. Then other incisions are horizontal utility, lateral utility, visor, extended thyroid, boomerang incisions. Now over the radical neck dissection proper. About uh, the radical neck dissection, the boundaries of the radical neck dissection I've already said it is from the superior, the superior border so is from the inferior border of the lumbar to the clavicle inferiorly, posteriorly anterior border of the trapezius and anteriorly the uh, um, uh, opposite to the anterior belly of the diagastric and the lumbar. So, and then the thyroid cartilage and then the lateral border, the lateral, lateral border of the sternomyoid. Lateral border of the sternomyoid. So, not in the midline, please remember. Okay. So, the structures removed in radical neck dissection is level 1 to level 5 lymph nodes, spinal accessory nerve is removed, sternocleidomastoid and omohyoid are the two muscles which we remove, internal jugular vein and the external jugular vein. Sensory branches of the cervical plexus, which is again an important structure here. Some mandibular cervical gland is removed, but uh, the parotid is not removed. Only the tail of the parotid gland is removed. If you remove the parotid, it goes into extended radical neck dissection. And about the indications, why do we have to do the radical neck dissection is, if there is extensive cervical involvement or matted lymph nodes with gross extracapsular spread and invasion into the um, accessory nerve, um, and then it's a jugular vein and the sternum is a mastoid or there is recurrence of the disease after surgery the, after radiotherapy, chemotherapy or the combination then we would like to go for radical neck dissection okay about the contraindications of radical neck dissection uncontrolled, untreatable primary malignancy no use of radical neck dissection evidence of distant metastasis no use of radical neck dissection inoperable neck masses that is if there is a mass fixed to the carotid artery then radical will not be enough. We have to go to extended radical neck dissection. If it's mass is fixed to the cervical spine, vagus nerve, branchial plexus, cervical sympathetic chain, then radical neck dissection is not enough. If the life expectancy is very less, if the patient is unfit for major surgeries, then these are the contraindications for radical neck dissection. About the modified radical neck dissection, okay, modified radical is radical neck dissection, but it is modified in order to uh, maintain the function. So, the extension is the same, but the structures removed are in type 1, the accessory nerve is preserved, type 2, accessory nerve and the intertubular vein is preserved, and in type 3, all the three are preserved, known as functional neck dissection. Type 3, modified radical, is also known as functional neck dissection. This, the rationale of uh, putting these structures in place is, sorry, it reduces surgical shoulder pain and shoulder dysfunction because spinal accessory helps the shoulder movement, we all know that. Proved cosmetic outcome because the sternocleidomastoid improves upon the um, neck uh, uh, contour. It reduces the likelihood of bilateral jugular vein resection and then contralateral neck involvement as we know that jugular, inter interjugular vein resection bilaterally is very uh, difficult because patients will have lots of complications. So now type 1 as we have said is the, this is preservation of the spinal accessory nerve. Type 2 is the spinal accessory as well as the internal jugular vein. Um, and type 3 is even the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now about the selective neck dissection. Uh, selective neck dissection is preferred type of neck dissection nowadays and we uh, say it is the dissection of level 1 to 3, 3 to 4 rather than selective. This is cervical lymph adenectomy with preservation of one or more lymph node groups. Four common subtypes are there, as I have already said. supra omohyoid neck dissection. supra omohyoid selective neck dissection boundaries are superiorly, 
as we have already said, it is the, the dissection of level 1, 2, 3 and uh, 1, 2 and 3, okay? So, inferior part of the mandible, junction of omohyoid muscle with the internal jugular vein. Uh, in su supramohyoid dissection, we reach to the junction of the internal jugular vein and the omohyoid. This is the lower extension of the supramohyoid dissection. Posterior border is again the same, the sternocleidomastoid and the nucleus branches of the cervical plexus and then anteriorly opposite um, anterior pelvic diagastric high bone and lateral border of the omohyoid muscle. This is the supra omohyoid dissection. So this is in the anterior triangle but not reaching the midline again and not going below the uh, level where the omohyoid crosses the internal jugular vein. So this is supra omohyoid dissection. This is the dissection very favored by the ENT surgeons when we see the tongue tumor or oropharyngeal tumors. Now, indications is oral cavities from a cell carcinoma, T2 to M T4, M0, M0, or T1, T4 tumors, M1, M0, or bilateral neck dissection for anterior midline or fraud of the mouth cancers. In the midline cancer, we do bilateral SOMD. Now, we go to lateral selective neck dissection. Lateral, just the lateral part, that is the second third and the fourth, just below the sternocleidomastoid muscle, that is around the jugular vein. So it is end block removal of the jugular lymph nodes, that is lateral neck dissection, 11, 2, 3 and 4. We've already seen here, the, la the, um, the levels 2, 3 and 4 indications are N0 neck nodes uh, in carcinoma of the oropharynx, hypopharynx and even supraglottic carcinomas. We have to, the lymph nodes that drain is in the lateral group of lymph nodes. So we do lateral selected or lymph node level 2, 3 and 4 dissection. Okay, this is bilateral selective neck node dissection done for CA of the tongue, carcinoma of the tongue. Okay, posterior lateral neck dissection now. Posterior lateral is the lateral group. See, okay. Oh, posterior lateral is the posterior group of lymph nodes as well as the lateral group of lymph nodes. That is end of the uh, excision of the nodes one, two, three, four, and five suboccipital and posterior auricular nodes. Indications are nodal metastasis in the scalp, malignancies, melanomas, etc. So this is the picture of the uh, melanoma, you know? and we have done the postural dissection. Central compartment dissection is uh, from the higher bone above the postural notch below, and it have to sheets laterally. Structures removed are ipsilateral thyroid lobe, level four, lymph node, perithyroidal, peri uh, we call it that is delphins, and paratracheal lymph nodes are removed. This is done for thyroid cancers. Indication factors for the thyroid carcinoma, parathyroid carcinoma, subglottic carcinoma, laryngeal carcinoma, etc. And then carcinoma of the um, subacral esophagus. Now, extended neck dissection is left. Definition is any previous dissection with any other added structures like uh, we can add, add as I've already said, carotid artery like the hypoglossal nerve or the parotids, um, etc. Uh, so indications are carotid in, uh, artery invasion. Others are hypoglossal nerve, and mediastinal lymph nodes, or arthroidal nerve removal. Contraindications are intracranial spread of cancer, extensive erosion of bony skull base, lateral walls, phenoid, cavernous sinus. Uh, we don't do even extended lateral extended dissection. Now, this is a uh, medicinal neck node dissection, which we surgeons do not know. We ENT surgeons, we don't perform. This is done by the general surgeons. It is just to give you the uh, like picture. Approach to this will be a medicinal based by this route, uh, by removing the uh, sternal. Okay. And so, we this was the section is done, and then we uh, repair it by pectoralis major, my cutaneous plan. Okay? Now, complications. Last but not the least, hemorrhage, as we know that artery hemorrhage, clamp and suture, CTBS surgery should be called if there is cavity artery hemorrhage, jugular vein hemorrhage, that is not very uh, difficult, we plicate it with a posterior vegetal diagastric, and cavity sinus reflex, while dissecting around the cavity bifurcation, patient may have hypotension, we have to careful, be careful while uh, fiddling around it, pneumothorax, surgeons can work, do a uh, get it in chest pain, air embolism, when, when large veins are opened, clinically patients will have sinus hypertension, and then um, the peripheral pulses will disappear. We have to be careful in cases of air embolism. And post operative complications like uh, hematoma, suction drain should be always applied, wound infection, skin flap loss or necrosis, salivary fistula because we have removed the tail of the parabola officially, and chylus fistula is very important. Around 75% of the chylus fistula is from the left side of the neck. And uh, in chylus fistula, if it is uh, less than 600 uh, ml of uh, uh, fluid, then we have to replace the fluid. We have to correct the uh, electrolytes 
patient will have hyponatremia, hypochloremia, uh, hy and then we'll have hypoproteinemia. Yeah? So we have to give fluids and we have to give parenteral, um, medium chain uh, lipoproteins also. And if the patient has more than 600 of the ML of this uh, chylus leak, which is whitish milky uh, substance coming out, yeah? then we have to uh, give 50% uh, fat and then we have to put the patient in trend Trendlenburg position, increase the uh, intramural pressure, we see the leak and repair it for 4-0 proline. Okay? And then facial edema, as we have seen in this picture, this facial edema, this is because of the ligation of the bilateral jugular, interjugular vein, which is very, very difficult for the patient. This is known as purple pump pumpkin appearance. We have to put the, put the patient in um, get a head up position and then we have to uh, decrease the amount of fluid given to the patient, give uh, dexamethasone, and please avoid uh, dilating bilateral interjugular veins as far as possible. Easily said, but difficult to do that. Seroma, platelet electrolyte imbalances, carotid artery rupture can also be present, we call the CTBS. And rate complications, recurrence, primary, nodal distant, and in thyroid or parathyroid failure, parotid tail hypertrophy can be seen as a complication, Lymph edema, hypertrophic scar, keloid, wound healing after radiation therapy, wound infection, fistula flap necrosis, and even osteoradial necrosis. Thank you.